Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. Or else find this, man. You are rocking with the hottest. Put your hands up for the boss. The Mix Master is live. Get ready. You're listening to the boss of the big boy. Good morning, Sunday. All my sports betters in Las Vegas and around the world. I'm back at you. we got to find those dogs in the NFL today. JB, the ticket, Vegas Scoreboard Express, live here on Vegas X. Digital Sports Network, KSHP AM 1400. Got my main man, Ronnie B., on the line with me from the Rampart Casino. Ronnie B., how you doing? Good morning, my friend. Good morning, JB. It's Sunday morning. It's a great day. That's right. we got to do a little bit better than we did yesterday. You guys actually gave out a winner yesterday. You said you were sticking with the Georgia Bulldogs for them to cover that spread. Put cash in your pocket. Unfortunately, I went the other way. And the Tigers were chewed up by the dogs. But I'm bringing back John Ryan, Predictive Sports Betting Playbook this morning for some NFL talk. My early NFL play is looking good. I've been riding heavy with those Minnesota Vikings. Looks like these guys are up right now 17 to 7 on the New York Jets. Jets scored right before halftime. So we'll get into it before we get back from this short commercial break. But John Ryan, good morning to you. How you doing? I'm doing good, JP. Went five and one yesterday, very humbly stated. Because I know the betting guys can they don't like bet they don't like bragging. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They NFL card and see if we can do it again. They got mad at me yesterday, but you know what? It's new religion. It's Sunday NFL. We're gonna get something back. Had to open up a new pack of cash yesterday because we're going to talk about that big explosion for Alabama. Normally, I would take a big dog like that in Vanderbilt, but me and Ronnie, you know, we talked about it a little bit. Didn't see that coming, so we'll keep it honest. All money, all sports, no bull. When we get back from this commercial break, guys, college football recapping and jumping into today's NFL picks. Stick with me. You guys know I brought more winners and more picks for free for myself and my handicappers over the years. So, again, keep it locked here. We're getting money. You're listening to the boss of the big ball, J.P. the Tech. Hey, you score for it. Giving you that grease. Skip your cable bill this month and join the action with J.P. and Fubo TV. Get seven days free, 15% off your first month. No credit check, no deposit, no installation hassle. Go to FuboTV.com slash JB. Sign up, download the app, and start watching games. Enjoy being a subscriber after the first month. Easy cancellation anytime. Regional restrictions apply. Sign up at VegasScoreboardExpress.com. JB to Ticket Vegas Scoreboard Express back at you live here, 107.1 FM. AM 1400, got to give you some grease this morning to wake you back up. The NFL is live here on deck. Again, my main man, Ronnie B. Rampart Casino, good morning to you. John Ryan, Predictor Sports Betting Playbook, rotowire.com. Good morning to you. So glad to have you guys back on the line with me again, giving you some more grease. Quick college football recap yesterday. Because college football, the reason why we didn't go into a lot of games, and I wanted to tell you this, Ronnie B. live on the air, is because it was small school Saturday. Majority of the schools were smaller. A lot of mid-majors, you know, I don't really cap them as much as I used to due to the transfer portal. But let's talk about some of these big-time schools because we had some wowzers going on last night. Haven't seen these types of upsets in quite some time. The only upset I've called really this year was Georgia Tech over Florida State that first week. Florida State continuing their slide down the razor blade into the alcohol. Clemson beating them on the road. But let's talk about this Alabama game yesterday. I mean, just give a shout-out where credit is due, Vanderbilt. I always give them a hard time as one of the Brainiac schools, but they were able to get it done yesterday. 50-45. to Uh, Ronnie B., I'll throw this one at you because you mentioned it yesterday in regards to the uh, second-half bet there, that first-quarter bet. When you saw Vanderbilt come out here at home, home dog plus 1,000, alumni bet actually cashed in for this one yesterday. Alabama was number one. You think they're going to drop all the way down to number 10? I'm seeing some projected polls that have them going as low as 12. Uh, Do you think this loss to Vanderbilt takes them out of the full college football playoff picture? Go ahead. 
Well, I'll tell you, I don't think it'll take him out of the playoff picture, but yesterday as I was watching that game, I had my own money on that game as well. And I was watching it, talking to a few other guys there. And what I saw is, I, I believe the coaching change has created a new atmosphere in Alabama. They were not ready to play. That coach did not have that team uh, ready and fired up as the number one team in the nation. The week prior, yes, they came out in the first quarter and scored 28 points against Georgia. Yesterday, they were down 13 to seven against Vanderbilt. So, no, I, I believe it's the coaching change. And I think they're going to play to a level of their competition. I don't think that coach is the right fit for Alabama. You big dummy. Yeah, I didn't think he was the right fit for Alabama as well. John Ryan, your thoughts on this one? Alabama looking like they could drop all the way out of the top ten. The SEC yesterday, a couple of other dogs here. South Carolina gave them out yesterday. Ole Miss ran all over them. Ronnie B., you were right on that pick uh, against me yesterday. But the SEC had an issue yesterday with Alabama going down to Vanderbilt. I mean, your thoughts on that? Ronnie B. thinks it's coaching. I think it's personnel, but go ahead. It's mind-blowing. The only good thing about it was I cashed the ticket for wins for Vanderbilt, believe it or not. It's a piece of money bet, but I never thought in a million years that they were going to go over the total beating Alabama. So my little database here, which isn't little, but it tells me that there's nine times since 2007 that a top rank, a top rank team, five or better in the standings, favored by 20, lost the game. And Alabama is the most recent one. The one before this was on November 26th of 2022 in Tennessee. Oddly enough, um, oh, that's the, the next game. The, the teams bounce back from me, so Alabama might be on my radar for this coming week. But uh, Tennessee in 22, in week 12, lost, and they were ranked uh, in the top five. They then went to Vanderbilt, oddly enough, on the road and, and destroyed them 56 nothing. So I agree with what Ronnie said. I think the coach is not a fit at Alabama. I mean, that team missed Nick Saban more than anything yesterday, and they didn't have the focus, and they didn't have, like, the will to come back like Saban's team did have. Yes, you know, yes. Even at 21 to 10, you would have thought that Alabama would have said enough is enough and just blown them off the field, but they didn't. Well, we talked about it a little bit last week about certain teams being gassed. I did pick it incorrectly. You know, I, I, I got, a, got a lot going on, you know, <laughs> in my life here. But we talked about it with Kentucky, and then this week, I'm assuming Alabama was the team that was absolutely gassed out there. That was a huff, a huff and a puff type of comeback over Georgia last week. And um, I think Vanderbilt, like I said, you know, this was their early season bowl game. So Vanderbilt able to get it done. Alabama all over the place right now. All the Crimson Tide fans are wondering what's going on, and I know they're going to be overpriced next week. Probably be minus 25. Uh, John Ryan, while I pull up this Michigan-Washington game, because that was a stinker as well, um, who is Alabama playing next week, or, or are they on the bye? Go ahead. Uh, let me look up who Alabama is playing here. Um, but, the you know, the Washington game didn't surprise me. I, you know, how can you – Michigan, come on. You can't even pass for 100 yards. And that's Michigan. And they got – you know, it, they take the price yesterday. And they I don't even know if Michigan's a top 25 team. Oh. Um and I wow. thought that at the beginning of the year. So maybe their flaws are being exploited now, and uh, they're going to have a rough, rough go of it the rest of the year. But I Alabama think so. Here, yeah, go ahead. Alabama is at home against South Carolina. Oh, and boy. South no. Carolina is coming off a drubbing. Yeah, got beat own. down. Got beat down. Only got a field goal yesterday versus Ole Miss. Ronnie B., I'll go over to you uh, on the talk on the Michigan. This was a situation where, again, I think the – AP writers, the coaches, polls, they're trying to give a lot more grease to Michigan than they necessarily need on the football field. Because what we saw yesterday, it's just there, there's no offense here. J.J. McCarthy, you're seeing how good he actually was in the NFL situation he ended up in. He's backing up Sam Darnold, actually going to be learning a lot from Sam over the next couple of seasons. Hopefully if Sam can stay healthy for the Vikings here. But Michigan's in trouble. Washington looks relatively like Washington. Just a couple of thoughts from you, Ronnie B., on that game, and then we'll move down to the last game here, which was USC. Again, we talked about this. And under three clouds and a pile of dust type game, and USC went down yesterday. A lot of the bets that I had on my list from teams that should have won did not win. We'll talk about this Michigan, and then Ronnie and uh, John will go over to the USC-Minnesota game. But what are your thoughts? 
Well, yesterday, if you recall, I gave out Washington to beat Michigan. So that was one of my plays with the clients, and it was a good one. I, I have to pat myself on the back on this one. But Michigan is a team that's uh, rebuilding. It's uh, Everybody's got to face it. Yeah, they won the title. This year. But on offense, they had 10 new guys, and then yesterday they switched quarterbacks in the uh, second or third quarter. So they're, they're, they're experiencing growing pains, and I think they're going to wind up about a 500 team, maybe a game over 500. There you go, game over 500. Um, let's move down to this last game here, USC. Moving into the Big Ten, they go up into a Minnesota Golden Gopher country and get munched down on. In that under type of situation here, I think the total in this game was about 45 or 46, but it ended up being, I think, a total of 41. Minnesota winning this one here, 24 to 17. You talk about uh, this Moss kid. He was horrible yesterday. 200 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. And you got the guy Brosmer basically handing the ball off. Minnesota ran all over these guys. And they were able to rack it up 24-17. to 17. So, again, the Trojans at number 11, a two-loss team. It was the college football playoffs out of the pictures for USC. I'll throw that one to you, Ronnie B. Go ahead. I believe USC is going to be out of the playoff picture. I don't see this team adapting to the Big Ten style of football right out of the box, and it's shown yesterday, uh, and it showed against Michigan. They they can't play big powerhouse teams with the, with the muscle. They're used to the finesse game and the run and gun, and that's just not the Big Ten style. Not going to happen. Uh, going over to you, uh, John Ryan. Same thing I was saying before. You look at where UCLA is now, Washington. And USC, all except for Washington, you know, getting the win over Michigan. I think that was a home type of deal for them. But UCLA and USC, where do you see their, you know, futures going in this Big Ten? Because as Ronnie said before, USC is used to playing that type of football in a postseason situation, whether it be national championship back in the day during the BCS era or in a big time bowl game, Rose Bowl, Cotton Bowl, whatever it may be. You just got beat by Minnesota (laughs) in a two-loss season. In the beginning of the season, you talk about the college football playoff. Could there be a two-loss team in the college football playoff because the way the media wants to get these kids out there from that, you know, we got to get players and we got to get teams that, you know, the public is interested in. The only team yesterday to come out with a win that stayed undefeated was Miami at 6-0. Beating California, which Cal, you know, that was a great game. Miami had another great comeback, one of these types of games, and I'll be looking at them next week to maybe go against who they're playing against from a dog betting perspective. But top 10 is going to be topsy-turvy. It's going to be flipped upside down. Can we have a one-loss team, maybe a two-loss team, in the playoffs? John Ryan, your thoughts, and we'll take a quick break. Go ahead. Yeah, I definitely think we can have a, a multiple two-loss teams. And if you look at the, the SEC especially, what if Georgia loses the second one and then you know blows out the rest of the opponent? I do see USC uh, having six losses, guys, on the season. They have 10 state at home. And that team is quietly flying under the radar. They'll be probably ranked around number five this week. Then they play Washington on the road, Nebraska at home, and Notre Dame at home. That's four losses in my book. Said the Trojans are going to get down to four losses again. Uh, Ronnie B., John Ryan, Predictive Sports Betting Playbook. Let's hope they fare a little bit better here. Again, the Trojans, we are the home station, KSHB 107.1 FM, AM 1400. You guys got to pick it up down in a South L.A. Ronnie B., quick shout-out before we take this commercial break and jump into the NFL picks that are coming up in about an hour and a half. Taking a quick look at this New York Jets-Vikings game. Third quarter just starts, and the Vikings at 4-0 and in the NFL. Been riding that wave, still with that lead, 17-7. to Go ahead, Ronnie B., and then John Ryan. You stay on the line with us as well. Quick shout-out, both of you guys. Go ahead. Hey, let's give the Indiana Hoosiers a shout-out. They're 6-0, and J.B., 6-0, and Indiana Hoosiers. I'm telling you, Indiana, another one of these teams that you could possibly look at as not only a Big Ten champion-type team. You know, you see Ohio State did well yesterday. They got their win. But Indiana, 6-0. and We should see the undefeated teams, even some of the service academy. Shout-out to Army, Navy, both of them undefeated. We got to see a top ten that looks like the record show. And I think if the sports writers and those who can get those votes in, it should be a uh, an interesting type of top ten going into week seven. John Ryan, quick shout-out, quick commercial break. Go ahead. 
Facebook, you can follow me on the X at John Ryan Sports Number One. And uh, it is a great story. Navy and Army undefeated. I know going into this week, it was the first time since 1945, a few months after World War II ended, that they were undefeated. So I think it's great stuff. It just broadens the landscape of college football. That's right. Service Academy's getting it done. The original NIL guys, when we come back, Jumping into the NFL, you guys keep it locked here with me, JB, the ticket. We're going to tell you where the dogs are barking. And today, we're getting money. You're listening to the boss of the big bar. Steiner, the Nevada Style Pub invites you to play the best tavern, kino, and video poker in Vegas. Promos are how we roll, so make the most of your gaming dollars here with us. Come play our proud partner gaming promotion, Fly Aviators Fly, and receive daily free play, bonuses, and more. With a chance to win awesome brand of prizes and big money for all the jackpots each week. It's not only great gaming that Steiner's Pub has, it's the 24 awesome rotating draft beers. And Vegas is best appetizers to match. So join us in supporting your Las Vegas Aviators, Golden Knights, Lights, Aces, and the Raiders, as we make history in Vegas. Steiner, the Nevada Style Pub at 8410 West Cheyenne, 1750 North Buffalo, and Las Vegas Boulevard at Windmill. Steiners, I love this place. Skip your cable bill this month and join the action with JB and Fubo TV. Get seven days free, 15% off your first month. No credit check, no deposit, no installation hassle. Go to FuboTV.com slash JB. Sign up, download the app, and start watching games. Enjoy being a subscriber after the first month. Easy cancellation anytime. Regional restrictions apply. Sign up at VegasScoreboardExpress.com. All money, all sports, no bull. Back at you live. JB the Ticket, Vegas Scoreboard Express. My main man, Ronnie B. Grand Park Casino King. Trying to get that money back, get our clients back in the winner's circle. Yesterday, Ronnie, you did have a couple of opposite side picks for me in college football yesterday. Georgia and Ole Miss. I give you credit where credit is due. Congratulations and thank you for putting some dogs in their place yesterday. These uh, college football games, again, everything being brought to you by Fubo TV. That's right. It's going to be another good game. I was taking a look at the Army and Navy schedules. I think they could possibly be in the running to, you know, get in the top ten. I mean, I've, I've looked at who they beat. They've beaten all of their teams handily, but let's jump into this NFL again today. Fubo TV guys, go to jbtheticket.com. Three for seven days, giving you 15% off, saving you a ton of money. So, let's get into this first game that I had on the list. I sent you guys this morning. Rotation number 455, the Baltimore Ravens, minus one, minus 125 to 140, depending on where your money line is. But if that minus one is going to cost you, kind of expensive. Cincinnati Bengals at home, a plus $1 money dog. 120 is the money line for them. Total 48 and a half. The total's kind of normal here, but this is an interesting matchup. You've got two teams that I think are underachieving early in the season. You know, the Baltimore Ravens, we expected them to be in a better position than 500 at 2-2. Two and two. And then you've got the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, wow. I, contract issues. Joe Burrow hurt the first two, three seasons. It's starting to show at one and three. These guys are two and a half dogs, depending on where you get it, two and a half to one. Ronnie B, I'll throw this one at you. This is a battle of quarterbacks. You got the young upstart, but he's been hobbled with injuries, talking about Joe Burrow. And then you've got the old star wart and the MVP with Lamar Jackson seemingly not getting it done. They've got some issues on the running back side. You see Derrick Henry on the tail end of his career now. Maybe he can have a resurgence. But Lamar, you know, his numbers are kind of pedestrian. 72 uh, of 108, 858 yards, only five touchdowns, one interception. Joe Burrow doing a little bit better there. 95 of 134 for 978 yards, seven touchdowns, and one interception. So how do you see this one playing out? Is it an even matchup? From the quarterback perspective, are we looking at the defense of Baltimore to get after Joe Burrow here on the road? Because I just don't know if the Ravens are the right price as the favorite. 
But if the Bengals are that dog, I don't think that's a dog that's barking. But go ahead. Well, I'll tell you what, I am looking at this game today, and I'm looking at the whole board, and the numbers are all tight today from two and a half, four, one. So I'm, um, I think the odds makers are up against it right now this week, and it looks too easy for Baltimore to be uh, head and shoulders above what Cincinnati's been showing. But I'll tell you what, I like Joe Burrow at home. I think he's got his uh, receivers back and healthy. That makes a big difference. The first couple of games, he was missing both of them. Then he picked up one, and now Higgins is back and feeling healthy, too. There you so, go. If, you know, if they stop Derrick Henry, I think they got a great shot with Burrow today. I think he can throw the ball better than Lamar. And they're at home, and it's a division uh, rival and a division home dog. I got to take the division home dog. That's right. Talking about these home dogs here, Ronnie B., I like the way you're trying to sway me here. Going over to you, John Ryan, do you think that Lamar Jackson and crew can get in order? Because Ronnie was talking about the running game of the Baltimore Ravens. That ain't scaring nobody. The running game is just not scaring nobody. It's not happening. Okay. I don't see Derrick Henry on any fantasy boards as an expensive player. I'm not seeing a lot of write-up about him. I am seeing a lot of three yards in a cloud of dust here for the running side of the Baltimore Ravens. They've been doing a lot more winning by committee, relying on defensive stops and interceptions from that DB core, which is also a question I have for you, John Ryan. If Joe Burrow, if that right hand and that wrist is still giving him problems, do you think that the DBs are going to be able to get after him and maybe keep these guys in check, relying on you know Chase and you know T. Higgins? and try to put them on the running side of the ball because they got a decent little running back core over for the Bengals as well. They got a guy named uh, Jay Chase, which is kind of crazy because <laughs> if you know me, you know me. I got those uh, you know, concepts behind looking at where the quarterbacks have to throw the ball. So if you double-team Chase, now you've got T. Higgins out there, and they have to start running the ball, how does that going to – put the Cincinnati Bengals in a position to get inside of that spread. This is a very close one. If you play Cincinnati, you got to take a money line. But go ahead, John Ryan. I set it up for you. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think Baltimore's going to be in a great, uh, perfect storm here in this game. I wouldn't be surprised to see them win by double digits. And the reason is that they are the number one team rushing the football. No matter how you look at it, they're gaining 220 yards per game. It sounds like we're talking about a team from the SEC, for goodness sake. And that opens up what? It opens up play action pass. And extending the play uh, is something that Lamar does very, very well. So I think this is a very tough matchup. I am, you know, I was expecting this to be like four and a half uh, with Baltimore being favored. And the fact that it's so skinny right now has me a little concerned as the market's telling me I might be on the wrong side. But personnel and where these two teams are headed right now, I, I think Baltimore is clearly a better team. I have a little. Betting algorithm here for you that's on 50 and 28, 64% over the last 10 seasons. Bet on a team that's coming off a win. They covered the spread by double digits in that win. They had twice as many penalty yards as their previous opponent. Right. That's 64%. And then listen to this one. If the total is greater than 47 and a half, 19 and 8 for 70%. And if our team is the favorite, they then have gone 11 and 1 straight up and against the spread. I can't argue with that number, and I, I'll be on the Ravens today. He's taking the Ravens in this tight spread again. A look at the total here as a possibility. Again, rotation number 455, the Baltimore Ravens, minus one to minus two and a half, depending on where you can get them. Cincinnati, obviously, on the other side of that, plus 105. They're juicing the spread side, but we're getting some even money going back over to the total, 48 and a half. Do you think both of these teams can score? Going over to you, Ronnie B., John Ryan, and then we'll move along. Go ahead. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the line is moving. It opened up at 50, and it's down to 48 and a half, so the money's coming in on the under. And what John explained with the number one rushing team, I think the ball's going to be on the ground, and that clock's going to continue to move. Price. So I, uh, I, if I had to play it, which I'm not going to, I'd take the under, but I'm not touching it myself. There you go. Let's move along. John Ryan, any thoughts on that total? Go ahead. I really don't have a feel for the total, but I like what Ronnie said about the under. If I had any lean, it would be to the under. There you go. Let's talk about a dog that I've got on my list today that is barking. Rotation number 462, the New England Patriots at home today in the dog position. Another tight spread. Plus one, even money on the money line, plus 110 going up against the Miami Dolphins. I think this is going to be an easy grease situation. The Dolphins don't have a quarterback 
They still got Tyreek Hill, but he looks disgruntled. It looks as if the New England Patriots are doing very well with Jacoby Brissett. Gerard Mayo is keeping them relevant. They're winning games. It's not a complete meltdown early there. I think this is a dog that's barking in New England. John Ryan, I'll throw this one over at you. Go ahead. I'll tell you what I like in this matchup a lot, JB and Ronnie, is the over. Uh, one thing that sticks out is this game was priced at 45 points before the season started. That's places like the Circa and other casino sports books. And it's down to 36 now, 35 and a half at some places. And whenever it runs seven or more points like that, you want to start thinking contrarian because they do hit it about 64%. I also have a system here that has gone 42 and 21 to the over 67 percent last 10 seasons. Bet on a home team that has lost three or more of their last four games. Both teams have done that. The opponent has lost three or more. Both teams have win percentages between 25 and 40 percent. Now, subset: if our teams have won one game exact over the last four, the over has gone 26 and nine. 74 percent over the last 10 seasons so i'm i'm gonna be looking at the over here quite closely there you go i think jacoby Brissett can get some scoring here we talk about young quarterbacks you thought we may have got a young gunslinger matchup a couple of weeks ago with two attack of iloa going down with the fifth sixth concussion that he's had realistically that's the way it's looking and tyler huntley is getting the start for the dolphins jacoby Brissett. A veteran knows how to win, knows how to play games. Very pedestrian with the total yardage, okay? 61 of 101, 536 yards, only two touchdowns. Not really going to knock your socks off through the air, but I think that New England has the opportunity with Ramon Stevenson running the ball again today, getting inside of that 20-yard spread, keeping the ball out of the air. We don't want to see any picks get thrown by Brissett today, okay? And we don't know what we're going to see out of Tyler Huntley. And then when you look at the rest of the quarterback depth chart for the Miami Dolphins, I mean, how, I mean, how can you put money on that? I think the play here is New England at home. Dog is barking. Ronnie B., your thoughts, and then we'll move along. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, the total last week with the Dolphins, if anybody watched that game, I had the under, and I got kicked with that uh, safety, and then that punt that went back to the 10-yard line. And then on the fourth down, they run the touchdown. They don't take the field goal, but they go in for the touchdown. So the NFL script was there for you because everybody had the under. Now this week, let's take a look at what we got this week with the Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots. We got a snoozer of a game, okay? We got backups everywhere. We got quarterbacks that are long in the tooth. And the only thing I see the difference between Miami this uh, week and last is Tyler Huntley has the rust knocked off of him from last week's game. So I think he has the weapons to uh, possibly uh, put some scores on the board. And I, I agree, I like the over if I'm going to play it because I got burned last week with these uh, new rules on the kick. Yep, these guys are flushing you down. You know something I haven't talked about on the show, and I haven't necessarily noticed it, but what's going on with this new kickoff? <laughs> I mean, uh, I thought it was rugby for a second, and, and I didn't at necessarily – I mean, I know we're in, what, week five, week six. It, it, it didn't really register with me until I began to look at some of the special teams totals. My God! <laughs> They've essentially deleted special teams as a position. Let's talk about this in this particular game here and some of the other games we're going to go into. What is that about? Is I know it was supposed to be for safety reasons or I mean I mean come on, these guys aren't playing flag football. These are gladiators playing for top dollar. Just like they said in a, any given Sunday, L O Cool J's character, let him block. But like I'm saying, the reality here is, what are they doing on the kickoffs? And if you're looking at special teams, kickoff returns, any of that being a factor, how is that going to be a factor going forward? Because I don't think that's going to be a part of the game going forward. I think these guys are trying to get rid of that. And I don't think that it's aesthetically pleasing, and I don't understand. I, I see just touchback after touchback after touchback. So if you're not getting that opportunity to get a run back, special teams play. Do you think that we got to start maybe phasing that out of our betting analysis? John Ryan, I'll throw this one at you. I know you're big on numbers. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree 100%. The kickoff is just a joke. You know, you, know, you see it on TV. It looks like something that AI created instead of being reality. And I, I don't get 
how it's making it safe even or safer because these guys are big and they accelerate within 20 yards to full speed. So I don't, it, it just looks like something that rugby ought to be doing. It just doesn't make any sense. And if they, they, they can score a touchdown, kick the extra point, and then the team starts on the 30. Yeah, I mean. And maybe that's the solution, no more kickoffs. I mean, special teams stats, special teams players. I'm just looking at some of the uh, special team stats here now. Let me pull up a few things here. I mean, but probably isn't even any numbers on there. Okay, so let's talk about total yards here. And this is just between kick returns and kick return yards in total. Okay, these are some of the numbers that I am seeing for teams as a whole. Okay, the Dallas Cowboys, 213 yards. Pittsburgh Steelers, 13 total yards? What? What is this? And it's just a a, a reality now that I think that I didn't necessarily understand because dynamic players that we've seen over the years, guys like Devin Hester, I remember when I was coming up back in the day, kickoff returns, punt returns now essentially are taking more of the lead from a special teams perspective, but again, going back to, you know, that kickoff, is that going to be something that we're going to be continually to delete from our thought process here? Because I don't think we're going to see any exciting runbacks. I mean, they're basically both teams are lining up in like an old school war position. You know, remember that, uh, you know, you know, the British soldiers all got the red jackets and they all lined up on one side and the other guys line up on one side. You aim right at the other guy's head and hope somebody misses and hope the other guy hits it. <laughs> That's how it looks like. And then you got some guy way in the back, and he doesn't even look to catch the football. So, again, a lot of change there. Ronnie B., thank you for staying on the line with me. John Ryan, I hope you can stay. We're going to get back into it and give a couple of more picks on plays today. Again, we were looking at the Minnesota Jets and the new uh, – well, well, the Minnesota game and the Jets. That one's turned into a snoozer. 17-7. to 7. I hope we can pick it up this weekend. we got the upsets in college football. I need the NFL to start scoring this weekend, okay? Get off the script. John Ryan, your thoughts? We'll take a quick break, and then Ronnie B., your thoughts as well on that uh, kickoff thing, because, I mean, it, it's making the NFL weird. Go ahead. It is. It's, it's uneventful. It's unexciting. Uh, it doesn't do anything except uh, watch the ball go into the end zone, and I don't know what they do. I think they should eliminate it. <laughs> yeah, just get rid of it at this point. I think they wanted to make it so bad and so stupid and so annoying <laughs> that guys like us would get on the air and just say, man, get rid of it at this point, okay? You know, do a Bud Bowl or something like that. Ronnie B., your thoughts. Go ahead. Yes, you're exactly right. They've eliminated the special teams. And if you saw that uh, on free kick uh, from the 20 and it wound up on the 10 after a penalty, nobody even knew. The players didn't know. The coaches didn't know. Nobody knew what the rule was. It's, it's a joke. They need to eliminate it go back to the old school. Right, go back to the old school. Nothing wrong with that. Guys got to protect themselves. They're running fast. And then again... Like my main man Marion said on that uh, any given Sunday, let him block. JB the ticket, Vegas Scoreboard Express. When we get back, more picks, more plays, more cash, more money. Let's get it. You're listening to the boss of the big ball, JB the ticket. Skip your cable bill this month and join the action with JB and Fubo TV. Get seven days free, 15% off your first month. No credit check, no deposit, no installation hassle. Go to FuboTV.com slash JB. Sign up, download the app, and start watching games. Enjoy being a subscriber after the first month. Easy cancellation anytime. Regional restrictions apply. Sign up at VegasScoreboardExpress.com. BSX Digital Sports Network. You're listening to the boss of the big four. JP the Vegas score. That's right, I'm back at you live, guys, giving you the grease, waking you up early this Sunday. We're talking about it. Week five, the NFL is on deck. Again, you guys get these games over at Fubo TV. FuboTV.com slash JB. We're telling you where the cash is at. I was just looking at some more of those uh, uh, special team stats, man. 
It's true. The Pittsburgh Steelers have less than 13 kick return yards. The majority of the yards on special teams are coming from the punt. So let's move back into another game today that I've got on my list here. I know, Ronnie, you're probably not going to be excited for this one, but we got to talk about it. The Las Vegas Raiders are at plus 500. <laughs> two and two going up against the Broncos team today that is two is two. Mile high. Denver, shout out to my guys over at Mile High Sports and Denver Sports Betting. Appreciate their support of VSX always rolling with the winners here. But again, the Raiders, they've got some issues. A lot of things I've been telling you guys over the years have been coming true again. You know, some of my insiders, you know, it's it's very clear what's going on here. They're not winning. They're not winning consistency. The fanfare has kind of waned, if you will. And I mentioned it. So many times, I told you guys about the roster. Last year, I said Josh Jacobs wouldn't be here. I said Garoppolo wouldn't be here. You guys laughed at me. And you were like, who are you? How do you know all this stuff? I'm like, I'm JB to take it. <laughs> Just telling you. And now we see Devontae, which I alluded to early on in the spring, late during the summer. I kept telling you he wants out. He's going to get out of here. Not going to tell you why. But if I don't see some improvement in this one particular area, I don't think he wants to be here. And now we've got an issue where he is legitimately calling for the trade. We don't see him on the depth chart today, but he still may get the start. I think there's some headbutting between him and the coach. Talking about Antonio Pierce, because I was quite shocked that when the uh, rumors were starting to leak out, and they said, you know, we're going to stand on business and make business decisions. But Ronnie B. here talking about this sports betting Rotation number uh, 465, the Raiders, plus three, dog position on the road, plus 134, money line, win by one, lose by none. 36 is the total. Small price on that, the Denver Broncos. They're getting some work out of this Bo Nix character, man. This guy's a really good young quarterback, okay? And I think if they are able to draft some of these skill position players that are coming out in the next draft here, I think that Bo Nix could be a lot better. But the Broncos and the Raiders, it's always an interesting matchup. Ronnie B., who do you think is going to be knocking at that door? Go ahead. Well, I'll tell you what, you got to you got to wake me up for this game, <laughs> JB. It's uh, I, I got to, you know, like you said, my my thoughts on the Raiders. They need to clean up from ownership all the way down to down the ladder to so get this team organized and back on track. Uh, if you're going to play the game out there, you Las Vegas fans and Denver fans, I'm looking at like you just said, Bo Nix. I think he grew up a lot last week beating the New York Jets in New York. I think that gives him a bunch of confidence today, and he's going back home. Uh, they're short uh, favorites against the Raiders, who are all messed up. And uh, it says here that uh, Mr. Devontae Adams is out today, saying his hamstring hurts. So, oh, yeah, he's got that hamstring, you know, that ham sandwich injury. You know that? You know, the string on the baloney got caught in the back of his teeth there. John Ryan, go ahead. At UNLV recently, where the kids left, and, uh, you know, they, they did actually better. Uh, even though they lost to Syracuse this past week, they did better. Mm-hmm. But in a situation in the NFL, when you have a, a future Hall of Famer uh, wanting a trade in the middle of the season, I, I think that's potentially a real virus that can destroy a team. So, yeah, normally if uh, there wasn't these internal problems, I would have a lean towards the Raiders to bounce back, but I can't trust them. To, I, I have no idea how they're going to play. I don't think anybody does. Denver's offense is horrible. They passed for under 100 yards last week and defeated the New York Jets 10-9 in a thriller. So I think this is a game I pass on. Uh, it's a shame that's what's happening to Raider Nation for sure. Well, the Raider Nation, they got what they asked for. I mean, everybody wanted Antonio Pierce as the head coach. I think he's a good coach. But I knew that coming in that the reality, you know, you got Telesco, he's in there, he's trying to make things work. Here's where the Raiders go, okay? So now I'm going to give some more advice. We're going to take Justin Herbert. We're going to steal him over from the Chargers. Consider that done, okay? We need a quarterback, and we need a quarterback now. From a receiving standpoint, there's a lot of good guys out there, a lot of free agents, a lot of young players coming out. It's the NIL era. you got some guys coming in on free agency. You can look around the league, and you can piece that together. And from the standpoint of where you don't have to spend money on special teams guys anymore, beef up that offensive line. Make the Raiders' offensive line so formidable that you could put a Brock Purdy back there and get the results like the 49ers did when they had their line built for Garoppolo, and he wasn't able to stay healthy. That's why Brock Purdy had that success. And now we go into this game again talking about the Cardinals versus the 49ers today. Again, guys, I'm dropping Greece Vegas scoreboard express. 
KSHP 107.1 FM, AM 1400. Shout out to my main man, Mark Hayes, too, man. Station director here, dropping grease. Shout out to my main man, comedian Spank E, Chicago's finest BET, Comic View. Came on the show yesterday. We were having some jokes, but I think we had a little bit too much fun Uh, because we didn't win any money. (laughs) But Ronnie B, let's jump into this game again, talking about it. Rotation number 467, Arizona Cardinals, big dog of the day here. Plus seven and a half, plus 285. I don't want to be on the wrong side of a dog that is barking. And I think that if Kyler Murray and the rest of the offensive crew can keep plugging away, keep chipping away at it, I think the 49ers, who've got some little bit of issues on their side of the football rotation, number 468, the San Francisco 49ers, minus seven, only gets you even money, okay? Ain't nobody trying to do that. That's expensive. And then you got minus 355 for the money line here. I think the book is telling you from a betting value perspective, strictly betting value, the Cardinals are the better bet. Seven and a half can get you minus 120. It's decent money, and I like what I see out of the Cardinals. They're playing some scrappy football. Ronnie B., start off with you. Go ahead. Well, I'll tell you what, I looked at this game a little bit, uh, but I think the Niners are getting healthy, okay? So I think that's going to be a big difference in this, plus the home field. I think Purdy's got his uh, weapons back in in the arsenal. Uh, that that, that uh, Braden Ayuk is going to play a big game today because he's talking uh, that he wants all too. So it, it, there's a lot of turmoil around the NFL. But I think the Niners at home, uh, I think they come out and show what they do as a system. And I think they score a lot of points today. Talking about the uh, 49ers, let's go over to you, uh, John Ryan here. You look at Kyler Murray and you look at Brock Purdy. Kyler Murray. 75 of 108, triple seven for the total yards at 777. Six touchdowns, one interception. You look at Brock Purdy, a lot more yards, 84 of 122, 1,130 yards, five touchdowns, two interceptions. Very evenly matched from a quarterback perspective, but I like the mobility of Kyler Murray. I like the ability of the Cardinals to run the ball. You got John Connor back there. Shout out to John Connor, man. That guy, or excuse me, James Connor. James Connor. He has carved out a career uh, in the backfield. And when, one of the things that I'm seeing with the Cardinals this year is they're not relying on Kyler Murray to get out of the pocket and run more. They've got receivers who are finishing their routes. And the offensive line is not that bad. They're one and three just because of a few issues with the you know play calling late in the game. But from a dog perspective, do you think the 49ers are going to blow out the Cardinals today? Seven and a half? John Ryan, go ahead. Well, with all due respect to Ryan, I, I really do like the Arizona Cardinals today, J.B., and, and it's based on analytics and a, and a couple of really powerful really powerful. But, you know, they, they play a defense that is not designed to put pressure on the quarterback. And sometimes that's been a successful strategy against uh, Brock Purdy. You know, to, to have multiple, you know, no blitzes. Very rarely did the do the Arizona Cardinals blitz, at least so far this season. As a result, they don't get many quarterback pressures either. That's a concern because Purdy's pretty darn accurate, and uh, he could just pick these guys apart. But the way I'm going to play it is just put a half a bet on pre-flop and then I'm going to hope that, the, as dumb as it sounds, it's just my strategy, it works. Look for the 49ers to score the first touchdown of the game, to which I will add 50% more on the, on the Arizona Cardinals. So I think this game will be a lot closer. Uh, lastly, betting on teams that lost every game against their divisional foes in the previous season, which the Cardinals did, and they are now facing a divisional foe, and the game occurs in the first half of the NFL schedule, 16-4. and four. Against the spread, 80%. I can't get off that number. There you go. I'm liking the Cardinals as well today. I think they're going to have a good road showing. I think Brock Purdy is going to have to push these guys over the top. And if you look at the scoring and the losses for the Arizona Cardinals, they lost to the Buffalo Bills last week in a close one. Got inside of that spread. You can bet them on the spread. The Washington Commanders, these guys are playing lights out football with their rookie dynamic quarterback that we could have had here in Vegas. And Jaden Daniels. And then they lost a tight one to the Detroit Lions. Getting that one win, though, over uh, the L.A. Rams, I mean, it is is a question to where I have to ask myself, how are we going to make money today in the NFL? Again, guys, we're getting ready to wrap it up again. Thank you so much. John Ryan, Predictive Sports Betting Playbook. Best play of the day, my friend. Again, 
You can follow him over on the expert at John Ryan Sports One. I got to get myself together here and go over to the sports book, put some digital bets in, do something because we got to win some money today. I think the dogs are barking. Look at the dogs across the board in the NFL today. That's my advice. Ronnie B, are you there? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm still here, JB. Have no idea what happened to John Ryan, but he liked the Cardinals, so we'll make that his best play. Go ahead. My best play today is I'm going to go uh, back with the Seattle Seahawks. I think Geno Smith, what they did in Detroit last week was uh, big numbers. They just came out short, but I think he's going to put up big numbers again today, and I'm going to go with Seattle minus the six and a half. All right, he's liking the Seattle Seahawks. Again, my big dog of the day. I'm sticking with the Arizona Cardinals in the points. I think they can get inside of that spread. Also, I might have a sneak peek at that Cowboys-Steelers game because I feel that the Steelers at 3-1, and one, shockingly, could continue from a defensive perspective. I know Dak is going to be quite gingerly coming out of that backfield there, and I just released a couple of Cowboys players from my fantasy team that were doing nothing. So, again, Ronnie B., thank you so much for stopping by the big board. John Ryan, thank you so much. I know you had to get out of here and go over to the book. Any final thoughts, Ronnie, and then we'll get out of here as well. Go ahead. I think it's going to be a good day for the NFL and for us and what we chose today. Let's win some money. That's it. Let's win some money, guys. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week, Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. KSHP, 107.1 FM at a.m. 1400. Around the world, iHeartRadio, Spotify. It's time to get out of here and get the money. You're listening to the boss of the big ball. J.P. the Tech Act.